In the past, we developed websites at a fixed width size. And the most common size was 960 pixels. That looked good in all monitors. Therefore, the larger monitors would see it and have some space around the right and left sides. And the smaller monitors would generally accommodate it almost 100%. In today's world, however, we have both small screens and large screens. We now have smartphones, tablets, and netbooks. Our larger screens are looking like up to 300 inch monitors, maybe more in the future. We also have televisions and projection devices. All of these need to accommodate the website. So building a 960 size no longer works well as it did in the past. The solution is to create what is called a responsive design. A responsive design provides a layout that responds to the screen size. But it's not just the layout and the size that we are concerned with. A responsive design also provides the functionality that responds to the screen size. The benefit of this is that it's all done on the client side and there is no need for server processing. Let me explain what I mean by a responsive website. I am looking at the San Diego Mesa web page in a browser on the desktop. However, if I resize my browser, notice how the layout starts to change. Now notice how the layout has changed. We've gone from several columns very easily to one column. Notice it is responding to the change very nicely. If I look at the Palomar College website and I start resizing my browser, notice it does not respond. Notice at the bottom I get a horizontal scroll bar because this website was developed at a fixed width and it will stay that way. It will not automatically respond to the width of the device as we see in the Mesa College page. So this is what we mean by responsive design. That the layout and also the functionality such as navigation responds with a change in screen size. Ethan Marcote coined the term responsive design in his famous article that you can read. And we're looking at a response methodology. We're not just concerned about altering the layout, but we're altering the functionality also, such as the ability to use your finger to click on a link that is wide enough and high enough to accommodate the size of your finger. We're also looking at a development approach called mobile first. And this approach encompasses designing for the smallest size first and then progressively enhancing to accommodate the larger devices. There are four basic components of responsive design. Setting the viewport meta tag, using media queries, using a responsive grid and using flexible images. We will talk about the first two today and the others in subsequent classes. However, sometimes a responsive layout might not be the best choice. And in some instances, a company might decide that we do need to have a completely different desktop site, 
maybe a completely different mobile site, maybe a different site for a tablet, and maybe also a mobile app. One example is the New York Times. Their desktop and tablet site is responsive, but for the mobile phone, we flip over to a different URL, and you can also download an app for just reading the news. So let's talk about the viewport. When the smartphones first emerged back in 2007, the developers created the ability to shrink the normal website so that it would fit into the browser, which is also the viewport of the mobile phone. So if you look here on the right, the, the mobile device, the phone, is set up so that it will accommodate a full website in its viewport. Now, obviously, this is relatively unusable. This is not accommodated. This website would not be developed for mobile. So for websites that are not developed for mobile, the phone will fit them in even though it's not usable. So on the left, the user would need to zoom in and then swipe back and forth in order to see the full site. And this is how phones are set up. They actually have an internal resolution which is relatively comparable to a desktop uh, resolution. And they do this so that they can fit the site inside the phone so at least you can see it um, in the event that the user did not develop a mobile site or a responsive site. So what we have are technically two viewports for the mobile devices. The desktop has one viewport. So the desktop resolution and the browser resolution are one in the same. On the mobile device, however, we have two viewports, a visual and a layout viewport. The visual viewport is what we actually see. And what we're actually seeing is something on maybe a 360 pixel wide device, maybe a little bit larger. However, the, view, visual, the layout viewport is the viewport that allows us to actually see 960 pixels or more. So we can actually see a 960 layout inside a 360 screen. And that's not really what we want to be using. So the first step in developing for mobile is we need to change the viewport. And this is done by setting the um, attributes on the what is called the viewport meta tag. And what we're doing is we're modifying the um, visual viewport so that we can see the contents at the right aspect ratio. This is the viewport meta tag. It is a one-sided meta tag. And notice my HTML layout. It goes somewhere after the title. Meta name equals viewport content. This is the content attribute of the meta tag. And it can take a string of parameters that are comma separated and they are all included inside the quotations. Now remember, quotations are optional in HTML5. So at minimum, you want to set the width property to equal the device width. So what we are saying, we are saying the width of the layout viewport will be the same as the, the device width. So if the device width is essentially 320 pixels, then the layout viewport is no longer 960. So we need to know this in order to develop for mobile. So when you develop for mobile, essentially you're developing something in your editor that's going to look nice at a 320 resolution. You're not going to cram a 960 resolution into 320 because that is generally what they respond to. All right, so this is very important. Width equals device width. Initial scale equals one. That's essentially the zoom factor, telling it that in the event that the user had been zooming, where zooming 
we're set resetting our zoom to the default of 100%. And this will make more sense when we start developing. All right, so let's take a look at what I'm trying to talk about. On the left, we see JavaScript Kit. This is a full-fledged website. Now, if this was not optimized for, for mobile, meaning there is no, number one, meaning there is no viewport meta tag set, the, the mobile device will attempt to fit this into its 320 pixel screen width. And obviously everything is going to fit, but it's going to look very, very small. You're never going to be able to click on those links unless you zoom in. Now let's look on the right hand side. Now granted the layout has changed but the right hand side is now optimized for mobile because we have the viewport meta tag set. The width is set to the device width. So therefore the content is going to be set at essentially a 320 pixel width and therefore it's going to look much bigger. So notice the difference in how the main content area might look in a website that did not have the meta viewport tag as opposed to one that does. So this enables us to see our content at a larger essentially aspect ratio so that we can, it looks, it is usable. All right, so the viewport meta tag controls how the website is displayed on the mobile device. Without it, it renders the page at the typical desktop screen which is not usable. So by setting the viewport, it gives you control over the page width and the scaling on different devices. So this is the first thing that you always need to do. All right, um, the viewport meta tag has other properties for the content attribute. You can set the, the height, the initial scale, minimum scale, maximum scale, user, user, user scalable. Uh, user scalable, height you never need to well, worry about. Just like with basic web development, let it be as big as high as it needs to be. It's usually the width that we're concerned with. So by de at minimum, developers set the width, they set the initial scale. User scalable will determine whether the user can zoom in or out. Um, you might want to set that to no if it was a mobile app, but normally speaking, I let the user scale. 